say you have a particular image, a very specific image, that you want to have on your ceramic sculpture or pottery. Let's also say you're not very good at drawing said image. This method will allow you to take a picture of any sort, really, and transfer it pretty faithfully onto that surface using nothing more than underglazes and newsprint. But those things are important for this process. So that's what you're going to need going forward. Let's get into a demonstration. This is the image that I'm going to demonstrate putting onto a plate. This is Shredder from his first appearance in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics. It doesn't matter if you don't know who it is. It doesn't matter at all. That's the image. That's what I'm going to use. So that's what I'm going to take and try to get onto a piece of newsprint. Newsprint will... Look at it this way. You're sandwiching underglaze between newsprint and slip, liquid clay. That liquid clay wants to grab onto the underglaze more than the newsprint does. So what we're going to be doing here is printing our image onto newsprint as a template, like so. Once that image is printed onto newsprint, we can then glaze on top of it, paint on top of it, like paint by number with underglaze, and then you'll see we can stick it onto that surface. But the first challenge is getting that image onto the newsprint. So, again, we're assuming that we don't want to go through the steps of trying to recreate this faithfully as a drawing. So we just want to run that newsprint through the printer, if possible. And if you have an inkjet printer, you'll be able to do this. What you need to do is get your hands on some newsprint, which you can buy in a pad at any art store, and cut that to the exact size of the paper that your particular printer at home uses. Once you've done that, do what I've done up the top here. You'll see I've taken a piece of masking tape, and I've taped this newsprint to that printer paper sheet. So my printer pulls from that side. You always want that edge, that taped edge, to be going through the printer first. If you do that backwards, I'm not responsible for what you do to your printer because that won't be good. It will jam it up pretty badly. So check out your own printer. You might have to play around with this a little bit, but if you have a top-loading inkjet printer, that should usually be facing down into the tray. So pull that through. So if all went well with that, this is what should come out. That exact image that I want printed onto newsprint. The reason why you can't just print this right onto regular printer paper is that it does not release the underglaze like newsprint does. For whatever reason, it just doesn't work. So we want newsprint here. So that's the first step. Get to this point, and then you can move on. Now. Once you have that printed, it's a matter of coloring in all of those spots as faithfully as you want to, or you can alter the colors if you want to. It really doesn't matter. It's just the orientation that we're concerned with. So here I'm using Amico underglazes. You could really use any kind of underglaze that you prefer, but I will use this piece of advice here uh, that I was given, that I've kept to, and I think that everyone should keep to. Follow the directions. If they say to do three coats, do three coats, whatever it is, don't, don't skimp out because you'll go through the work of doing all of this, you'll transfer it, and then after the firing's done, it will be too weak to show up or it will fade. So I go with at least the amount recommended on the jar and I paint in all of those parts. So you can see I'm taking my brush and coloring in all of these reddish parts on his uh, clothing here. Another thing to keep in mind is this upmost side here that, that's um, facing towards us is the one that's going to be making contact with the clay. So you should put down the layers that are the most important to be on the top. Because what you put down first here now is going to be on the surface, on the highest point, on the transferred piece of pottery or sculpture. 
So here I've gone into the jet black underglaze and you can see there's a darker area here where I've, I've gone in, started coloring it. Uh, be careful about understanding where you've applied and where you haven't applied because if you miss something, it's just not going to transfer anything at all. So just be diligent. This is a relatively complex comic book um, piece here. I mean, there's a lot of uh, negative sh spaces and shadows and it breaks up the surface quite a bit and it's small. So if you do something bigger, you do something simpler, it will be probably easier than, than what this was. But just keep track of everything. Now, we don't need that printer paper underneath. All we really need is the glaze on that piece of newsprint. And we don't need a ton of newsprint hanging off the sides. It's just going to get in the way. So cut your newsprint as close as you can to your image without you know, um, getting unnecessarily close and chopping anything off. Like what I've done here, I just took off the edges, maybe could have gone in some of these areas around here, but it's fine. This was good enough. This would work for me. So once you've gotten rid of that excess newsprint, you have a decal. This is what can transfer now onto whatever, any kind of clay that you want it to. Porcelain, stoneware, earthenware, does not matter at this point. It is ready to accept any of those. One thing you should keep in mind is not to crinkle this or bend it, crease it. In fact, don't store it at all. If you're going to use this, use it right away. The reason why is that underglaze is really just a thin layer of clay-like material on that surface. It will scrape off like a powder. If you get it wet, it will drip off. It can crack and fall off. So this is a very delicate thing. So once you've decided what clay body you're going to go with, in this case I went with a red stoneware body, mix up a slip of that exact same clay body. So if you don't know how to do that, I think the best way is to dry up a piece of that very clay, grind it up, pulverize it into a powder, and then slake that into a cup of water. So like you see here, I just added some of that dried uh, pulverized clay to this and mixed it up until it was smooth. You don't want this to be chunky. It should be a nice creamy consistency. Now paint over that glaze decal over that image with the clay. This is go time. Once you're here, there's no turning back. Once you start, don't stop and go back and forth. Coat it as efficiently um, and swiftly as possible without rushing it. Then you want to let that sit for just a moment while you switch gears. So this is what it's going to look like. Can't see the image anymore. Do have some kind of a mark on the paper, um, maybe here, maybe there, wherever the, the indicator of the top and the bottom is, in case it looks like this and you don't really know from this view what side is which, which detail um, points in which direction. You will be able to see it through the underside, but you probably want to know where it is before you flip it over because, again, this is wet. Now, while that's still wet, you need to do the same thing to the surface that you're going to be applying it to. So here's the plate that I'm going to put that shredder image on top of. So I'm wetting that with one, two coats, just enough that it stays slick and wet with the slip. You do not want the slip setting up. It needs to be wet enough, wet to wet. So this is what it looks like. I've made that decisive moment where I've pressed carefully that decal into the wet slip of that plate. I've kind of pushed out the edges a little bit just to make sure there's no air pockets in there. Unfortunately, for my sake, see these creases right here? That's no good. Uh, if I would have taken off a little bit more paper, maybe I wouldn't have had that. Uh, this is also a pretty uh, deep plate, so that's also part of the reason why it's distorting the image. But the flatter you can keep this, the better. Don't distort it, and also make sure that you aren't having any part of that decal hovering above the plate. Like if I had something over here where the, the paper is just over the top, there's a gap, nothing will transfer. So make sure there is clear contact, wet to wet, and let that sit for a moment. 
basically we want to get this slip to a leather hard consistency or um, maybe just before that. If you peel it off too soon, the glaze and everything will stay stuck to the paper. You'll peel it up and you'll just see the goo of slip. You won't see any image at all. If you wait too long, uh, it just kind of ruins everything when you pull that piece of paper off the surface. So just wait till that in-between po point where it starts to set up, it's not so squishy, and maybe carefully peel up a little corner to see if the image is laying down or not. If it is, go ahead and slowly peel the paper off. If it's not, and it's too wet, put it back down, let it sit there for a little while longer, and then try again in a few minutes. It might take a little practice, and it's probably worth it to make some small tests of this before you go in with anything that you spend too much time on. Now, if you take a look at this, scrutinize it, you see what I pointed out in that last image, those creases. They're running right through here and here. That's a problem with the way that that paper sat. It compressed the image in those spots, so be careful of that. And then in here, I didn't put enough layers of black. So this is real nice, very dark, high contrast. I spent enough time there. But in these areas, it's one or two layers of underglaze too thin. And now I'm losing detail. It's hard to tell what's going on. That's something I have to compensate for now. So here it is, fixed. Went back in, painted all those parts, refined the detail, smoothed out some of those areas of that excess slip on the sides. You still see the creases that I had pointed out, uh, but it's not that big of a deal. They don't really affect things. I also went in with a little bit more of that radiant red on the surface, so get that to pop out. But that's it. It's transferred onto that, that plate, and I could have done this with a sculpture. I could have done it with a different form of pottery. It could have been larger. It could have been smaller. You can do anything with this. It's a really great way to transfer a recognizable, uh, specific image onto your clay. Now, you can treat this like underglaze in any way that you would treat underglaze normally. You can add more parts to this, uh, you can embellish it, you could change some things, put you know, paint details on it, color in other areas if you wanted to. Do anything that you want with it. And of course, you can glaze over this with clear glaze. You can leave it just, you know, um, uncovered underglaze in the final product. So you can use it in all those ways. Think about any other strategy you've approached uh, the underglazes with before. But that's it. That's how you transfer an image. And keep in mind, when you mess around with doing a, a decal like this on newsprint, you don't necessarily have to print something out. If you want to hand draw with underglaze onto a piece of newsprint, you do the same thing. Coat it in the slip, paint the slip onto that object, stick it there, peel it off slowly, and that thing will be transferred. Newsprint is like a miracle media when you, a medium when you uh, approach it this way. Very forgiving. Just play around with it a little bit. Lots of fun. Uh, good luck.